This is Dark Souls Remastered running on PS5 and it looks absolutely fantastic. One of the reasons it took me so long to give this a go was I was actually a little bit worried that it wouldn't live up to all of the hype with it being quite so old. I think the original game came out possibly in 2009 on the PS3 and I was aware that it had had a remaster around 2018 but I just hadn't got round to playing it despite having played some of the other FromSoft games in the past, um, most recently Elden Ring. But when the PS5 first came out, I'd given Demon's Souls uh, a go as well, and that was absolutely superb. I also played Bloodborne um, a few years ago, which I also you know, very much enjoyed. But nothing really had prepared me for Dark Souls. The game starts you off in this area just here after a short tutorial and doesn't really give you much to go at other than speaking with this uh, single NPC here and he basically tells you that there's one bell that you have to go and ring quite high up and another bell deep underground. So with that said you're then off to go and explore and I think that's one of the reasons that I really like these games you really don't know where you're going, you're not really given much to go by, and the law is something that you need to piece together. So it's an action RPG um, where basically you've got to build your character up. You start off very, very weak with uh, minimal weapons. Um, here I'm actually playing on New Game Plus um, as I, I managed to finish the game on my first run, although it did take a fair while. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, um, but it's not completely faultless. Uh, it's not perfection in gaming or anything. Um, and this is really my review and my thoughts on the game, having finished it uh, with, with my just over um, 60 hours, I think it was, in the game. So, you are going to die a lot playing these sorts of games. I think once you embrace that and you get used to the idea and, and used to the fact that it's supposed to be part of the game, the game is very hard. The level of difficulty is set high. But the game's preparing you for what's to come and you've got to build that character up. I didn't find the game unfair, but it was, it was pretty tough in, in some areas. But also rewarding. I'd watched quite a few YouTube videos during my playthrough. Nothing to give me hints or cheats or anything like that because I like to play the games without any guides. I do think the first time you play these games is uh, sacred almost and you're not going to get that time back again. So I do try to play them without any hints or tips. But I did watch some of the um, videos about guys that had played this one that had anxiety or depression and how it had sort of helped them. It's quite interesting stuff really. So as you can see here, I was playing as a knight and you don't really start with much. You get your armor and um, you know, you have to find weapons as you go along really. I picked the master key as my starting gift. Uh, for nothing, for no other reason other than it was a key. Uh, and luckily, I, I kind of I had lucked out, really. It is quite a good uh, thing to start with. It opened up a few doors and a few alternative routes to take uh, during the early game, certainly. The game level design is something that people had already mentioned. I put a tweet out um, a week or so before I was actually playing the game properly just to say I'm going to give it a go and a load of people well a couple of people in particular had said all oh, the level design is very clever I think with the key what it was able to show me was just to save me a bit of time really but you can set off on one route going through a castle a forest a swamp whichever way you're going get all the way to the end and you can almost get back to where you started, albeit coming through a different door or a different area. 
so everything kind of goes in full circle. It's an open world game with only really the bonfires to serve as your friends. And it's the bonfires that allow you to save, upgrade, and there's quite a clever mechanic around kindling as well, where you use humanity that you find in the world, and you can use that to kindle the fire to uh, help you with uh, the um, Estus flasks, which give you a, a bit more life when you need to heal up. So yeah, quite a clever um, dynamic, really. I mentioned about the NPCs um, just briefly then. Uh, there really are not that many in the game, and they are spread throughout the game. When you do find them, they give quite limited information, but they have side quests, stuff like that. I didn't do loads, but I would love to go back again at some point and put more energy into those. I didn't really, and I never really played these games to kill the NPCs, but you can do, and there's various other things that you can get through doing that. Um, the only one I did was, uh, did, did sort of sacrifice was, um, I think it was the merchant just near to this area here to get the, uh, I think it's like a katana that he drops, but I didn't really use it that much. And again, quite early on, I found myself uh, in quite a tough area in the catacombs, but I'm glad that I did because I picked up this great scythe. And that lasted me pretty much the whole game. Uh, and I spent a lot of time upgrading it and getting it to where I wanted to. I did need to farm some of the Titan shards and great shards and stuff like that. But I didn't find the game overly grindy. Uh, and it was something that you know I, I enjoyed doing, uh, to be honest with you. You can see there, there's a message on the floor. So I don't really spend much time in this little video here reading them, but I did find them useful at times when you get stuck in an area, like has become customary in Souls games, really. Some of them do troll you, like, you know, treasure ahead and you're looking over the edge of a cliff. Uh, I don't think I fell for too many of those in this one, although playing the likes of Bloodborne and Elden Ring, I've definitely fallen for them before. I found the combat against all of these various enemies very satisfying. And there's a few different buttons that you can use to learn to become better. It makes it a bit easier obviously playing in New Game Plus at the moment with this great scythe, so it makes really short work of them, but I really enjoyed learning the combat of various different enemies, the blocking with the shields, uh, parrying, all different stuff like that. I found the bosses to be really well paced, um, although the run running back to some of the boss fights was a bit of a chore, but I didn't mind it overly. I, I didn't really struggle on that many boss fights. Uh, one or two did give me a little bit of difficulty. Uh, in particular, uh, Manus, Father of the Abyss, and the Four Kings. And those two, I did actually need to look on YouTube to see where on earth I was going wrong. After quite a number of attempts, I just was not getting anywhere and I was getting quite frustrated. So rather than just give up, I decided to uh, get some help and, and advice just off YouTube. The only other time I needed a little bit of help uh, was at certain parts of the game. Like when you meet, I can't remember the NPC's name, but it's a, a giant lady lying down after a particular boss fight. The game really opens up and it doesn't really tell you where to go. So I needed some help and it wasn't until I looked up that I realised I needed to go back and find this giant painting, which wasn't too far away, uh, but I needed to walk through the painting into uh, a different world. Again, I found that area uh, really interesting and very well designed as well, but pretty tough. Again, the level design, you can actually go to the right of that area. I went up the stairs this way uh, to the boss fight, but you can actually go the other way down into Deep Root 
Dark Brute Basin, I think it's called, and that then gets you to the forest that can get you to your first blacksmith. And the blacksmith's used really well in this game to upgrade your weapons. Uh, I find exploring um, in most of these games hugely rewarding. Not only is that the type of game that I absolutely love, uh, but you can upgrade your weapons, upgrade your armour, uh, all sorts of different things. You can also buy things from the merchants and the, the blacksmiths as well. So again, it's hugely rewarding and wants you to push that little bit further. But you've always got to balance the risk with reward. So here's the first boss fight of the game. Uh, this is the, I think it's the Taurus Demon. And it took me a while to crack this one. Uh, I, when I, the first time I got here, I was hugely underpowered. So I needed to come back later on once I'd leveled up. But through some perseverance, I managed to get there. So my verdict on the game, give it some time. If you're going to start this one, don't expect for everything to click straight away. The game is unforgiving, but fair. But if you like a challenge like I do, then it will definitely reward you. Prepare to die a lot. Once you do achieve the unthinkable of beating any of these bosses, it'll be a mixture of ecstasy and relief. I think one of the reasons I enjoy these games so much is they remind me of my old Master System games that ultimately teach you that it's okay to fail because you learn and try again. Thanks ever so much for watching, and um, yeah, I really appreciate you uh, doing so. If you want to drop a, a like and a comment also with your thoughts on this game, if you've played it before, uh, I think I probably enjoyed this just as much as Bloodborne. So definitely recommend you give it a go.